Welcome back to the Low APM Challenge, your number one guide for working smarter and not harder in the hardest game, the hardest 1v1 game in the world. We've learned that just because you can play fast doesn't mean you can play well. No, it doesn't necessarily rule it out either. We've got the race everyone loves to hate, Protoss. But Protoss is all about the details. It's all about preparation. It's all about being ready before, so that way you don't have to worry about after. Uh, and I think we've seen a lot of players just don't prepare before. The pylon efficiency and necessary infrastructure safety. The pen is rating. Setting up basic counterattacks. Focusing on the right upgrades. Using something I like to call control groups that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, especially even uh, up through Masters Protoss. I think Protoss is the most conducive to the low APM challenge, but also uh, takes the most research and takes the most preparation. As we saw uh, last time around with my decidedly less than perfect walling off, a lot of do as I say and not as I do kind of style. Uh, this time around, especially after playing some Terran uh, not too long ago, uh, I'm expecting a lot of Protoss versus Terran. Anecdotally, uh, and statistically, though, a lot of Terrans in the Diamond League, and they're going to be bringing the cheese. Everybody is. Everybody in the Diamond League, especially higher up in the Diamond League, is trying to get that Masters rank, and it's harder than ever because Bobby has literally made it. So there is a, a range of high Diamond, low Masters where, where getting Masters is very difficult. But today we're aiming for Diamond 1 from Diamond 2, and that means our APM limit is going to be 110. And for those who don't know, if I go over that limit at the end of the game, the average, uh, for every five I go over, gift a sub to the Twitch chat. Yeah, it's September. We're going to make it rain, though. No, you've probably tuned into the wrong episode if you're expecting a free sub, because I'm usually pretty consistent with Protoss. But with that said, I know people just skip over these intros anyways. Now you can smash that like button and fall asleep. And the rest of you are actually looking for the games. Well... Maybe we'll timestamp this second just to shame you before we jump in. Where were we? The maps. I believe these were my Terran map vetoes. Um, is that true? Let me let me go back. Yeah, you do share map vetoes. I'm 100. But Moon Dance, the pocket basement. I've essentially vetoed all the maps that are significantly different. And for Protoss, since you have to set up your base in a certain way. Uh, having more variables is usually not, uh, let's be honest about our short-term memory loss here, our TikTok attention spans. If you veto Moondance, Waterfall, and Stargazers, you won't have to worry too much about thinking. You can use a similar style and opener on each map because they are all, um, yeah, every single one of these maps except for Cosmic Sapphire has a ramp up to the natural. It has a standard expansion pattern. Cosmic Sapphire does not have a ramp at the natural, but it is a slightly smaller choke point, which, while it pre presents its own geometrical challenges, uh, is a little easier to wall off. So, thank you for tuning in, and uh, let's get started. Today we're focusing on uh, not apparent. Okay, I, I was waiting. I forgot. This isn't uh, some modern game. This is a game people actually play. So. Uh, no time. We're jumping in. Stormgate, please. A Protoss, our first opponent. Well, not Welcome quite yet, my friend. Broad Just regular Henry. gates. <clears throat> Another game of StarCraft. So Protoss versus Protoss um, is a mess. It's a, uh, Jimmy... It's not easy to have a standard build. In fact, honestly, I don't really. We're going to be focusing on a Robo opener against Terran and Protoss most of the time, though flirting with the Stargate idea. And then a Stargate opener is essentially required at most levels against Zerg. I'm going to wall off here. I'm actually going to scout off the gate just to keep it standard. We're walling off at the ramp because two adepts in your base has ended many games between 1,000 and 10,000 MMR ever since adepts have existed. Looks like he scouted. Give me the fist bump there. 
That's, uh, well, scouting is definitely a word for having a probe out that early. I'm gonna patrol my probe here. So, why am I doing that? Because in case he wants to try any uh, building-oriented early game strats, it appears he doesn't. He's got his cyber core here. I start my cyber core as soon as possible. He's chosen the pylon sort of wall. Honestly, either way, not a huge difference. I'm gonna get my second pylon at the back corner here. This leaves me an opportunity to potentially build a shield battery in the middle line uh, later on. I'm just patrolling here. Let's take a look at his chrono boost. He has two chronos banked up, as do I. So the mirror match so far panning out. I'm building two stalkers. I'm gonna just chrono warp gate. I'm not committing to chronoing those units. I'm gonna try to build a pylon on the low ground, make sure not to block my nexus. So important to note, oh wait, he has a pylon in his base, okay. You gotta keep track of those pylons. Cause he should have just as many as me. And there you go, mirror match so far. I'm not expecting adepts early, but I'm not ruling it out either. I'm just going to scout around my base a little bit. I'm going to put this probe on the high ground here. And this is a bit uh, greedy, but I think we're going to get away with it just fine. Which is building two sentries right now. Two sentries. Oh, don't want to have that many in gas. And then a robotics facility. We're gonna build our next pylon just as a potential counterattack pylon. I'm gonna scout in here. I've got this probe hotkeyed just in case. I want to try to see if he has Your an expansion, under attack. and that doesn't tell me anything. I have to consider the the fact he could just go for a big attack. I'll have enough energy for a hallucination momentarily. Research finished, but I'm still waiting on high sec auto tracking. And that's part of the reason to get two sentries, is so you'll still have energy for anything else. Warping and stalkers. I'm gonna hallucinate an oracle and send it across. Keep these units kind of tucked in here. We're gonna have. Make sure this probe is hockeyed. I usually keep it on too. Because that probe is for potential, like, adept run-bys. He's also got a robo. He's also got a battery in the main. Bit of a macro player himself. All right. Army Chrono attack. boost on Select probes, then. I'm going to get a second. I'm just going to queue up purpose. the immortal. But here we are. What I want to do now, I'm focused on probes. Get a third sentry. One more stalker. I have a nice baseline army. I'm just going to continue hallucinating phoenixes and sending them out. I've got an observer here as well. I'm going to hotkey this observer in with the army. In case he sends an obs out. Get the Triforce pylons in the main. And now we're getting a Twilight Council. Army under attack. Let's see here. Not immortals, yeah, these well. things. What he's getting here. And a forge. What I'm the advantage I should have is a few more probes. In this case. And then yeah, I'm gonna siege up the obs. I see him taking his gas as well. I'm gonna continue building immortals. We're gonna need to check and see if he takes a third. Because then I can maybe decide to hit some sort of timing. We're going to start with Blink. Because uh, being left without Blink means he can outmaneuver me, potentially. How many probes are we at? 45, so we really got to consider a third base. We're going to see if he has more gates on the way, though. One, two, more gates. Chrono boosting plus one. It's a good idea. We're going to add four more gates. They're going to be a little later, 
but I also have the Immortals I invested in, which is a pretty huge deal. I gotta keep checking for that third. I'm gonna warp in one Zealot there. That's gonna be my continued scout. One more Immortal. And, yeah, he's taking his third. Templar Archives. I'll take mine. A little later, continue chrono boosting. We'll take our Templar Archives. I mean, he's got good ideas. I agree. It's a good priority. We're going to move the Observer a little further out here. To try to cover all my bases, literally and figuratively. Out of that cluster. He up charge here. Nice. I'm gonna get a cannon in the main base, just in case. Same idea here. Get a shield better, that should be in range. Research all done. Get those archons. Transfer over here, get the gases, Your upgrade is complete. and I think what we may end up is disruptors, but I'm going to focus more on just having the immortals. I need to know if he's going to attack. This is very important. I need to have vision. I'm going to send some zealots out here. We're up to, we're going to go up to about 66. I'm going to continue cluster, building immortals, by the way. Looks like he sent another zealot out there. You have a couple more the enemy. gates. Eight gates, eight minutes. You know what? We're going to go up to ten gates. I don't have charge done yet, but let's see. He's got plus one. I'm going for plus two right now. I'm gonna get a warp prism next. Archon Army time. Select all and panic. I Research need to go complete. check for a robo back. That's anything? what we're looking for over there. A fourth nexus. As we Army continue this attack. like uh, knowledge Rebels. arms race. Enemies in There's your the base. robo bag. For your artosis pylons. But we you saw an immortal come out. That's very important. So we saw that immortal, which means he's not making disruptors this exact moment. So I'm not going to worry about disruptors. We're going to go Archon, Immortal, Charge Lot, and we're going to focus on having way more mobility than him. So he's got the Watchtower right now, so I'm going to fly all the way around here. With the War Prism. I don't know where his main army is, which is a little concerning at the moment. But we're going to try to deny his fourth. Mineral field depleted. Is the first priority. Start plus three Upgrade immediately. Complete, but at what cost? Going to get some more pylons in general. Denying the fourth base is... Well, you actually, he may have the other fourth here. This is kind of convenient. And I see no reason not to get into it here. This is a great angle for me. So we're gonna spread out a little. He's got shield battery overcharge though, so. Rapid fire some charge lots out. Your warriors are under attack. Building some immortals. Nice of him to give me an immortal. And he almost certainly has, we're just predicting he has that other fourth base, so. We're gonna borrow some probes from these bases. We're gonna morph an Archon here. Bring another couple up with the army. We're gonna use the warp prism. We're gonna head towards the main. We use that observer to see that he's looking the wrong way right now. And we can uh, jump on the disruptor there. Move these in. 
army under attack. Select all and pair. We lost this. He's building carriers, so we gotta be a little careful right now. A lot of careful. He's charged up those void rays. I have gotten through his base. Need to get rid of the shield batteries. Build some more Archons at home. But for now, Archon should be okay for dealing with a small number of carriers, especially if we badly hurt his economy. Which so far we have. Chrono boost. We're gonna. I already queued up the uh, shield upgrade. Gonna queue up an R. Well, a uh, zealot run by there. Gonna go ahead get this base as well. Pretty sure he's at the watchtower, so he's gonna see this. On purpose. Ah, uh, there's base DTs. Is and and upgrade's been attack. completed. We have an observer here. I have cannons in all the other bases, but the natural, so. You have engaged the It's enemy. just a little more annoying to deal with. Oh my god, those brood war carriers. And at attack. the end of the day, not immortals. Well, I do need to think about carriers because at some point he may have too much. Under attack. Do you recall Rico? DTs are very annoying. Mineral patch is gone, and it's not coming back. Set this base up. A lot of shield batteries here, especially. Chrono boosting out my shield upgrades. Warping some charge lots for this side. And I haven't hurt his economy enough here, is the, is the problem. You're all mined out of that mineral field. And since he has DTs, he could always just warp those in. And that's kind of the issue we're looking at at the moment. Your warriors are under attack. Gonna get the gas here. Just jam that in for now. He's dealing with this with DTs, which is kind of lazy. And expensive. Army you took attack. all the minerals from Select that cluster, you thief. Now we have the awkward DT versus DT fight. They're attacking your base. Hmm. Give them some trouble. Interesting here. Upgrades finished up. Army under attack. They're not immortals. But, well, his main army's out here. You may have seen the prism, but gonna get some more. She I'm going to start my carriers here. A mineral field has been depleted. Sending my DTs in. And then we're going to attack with done. the main army here. While he deals with all this. As you can see, the main army moving across. I need to be building carriers during all you this. The enemy? Make sure I Your siege up on one attack. of these ops. You're all mined out well, we killed that field. base. The big danger is in taking a fight and losing it. You have engaged the enemy. And then not being able to rebuild in time. So we need to try to hedge our bets against that. You've exhausted a Vespine Gazer. Chrono out more carriers. His army is going to be quite huge. <laughs> so we're really focused on like shield batteries, cannons. Army under attack. I need to Select try to find a way 
to get I mean, rid of some of my good. army supply without losing all of it is going to be the key here. Looks like he select all army to over. On purpose? This seems like a valuable use. Honestly, at this point, killing we're going to have to stutter step kill interceptors. But he's not able to launch them all at once, which is convenient. Building carriers. Set up this base. Chrono boost the carriers. Is gone, and it's not coming the back. idea is I'm slowly transitioning into carriers while he's quickly running out of money. That's what we're doing here. You have engaged the enemy. We're gonna get some more archons. Your warriors are under attack. out of that cluster, and still in the game. Nice. Chrono boost. Upgrade completed. Your forces are just a little bit better. We've essentially upgrade is all done. Cut down on his options quite dramatically. And that is the focus here. Mineral field Warping in. He's in your base, looking for your artosis problems. Here comes the neighborhood. In fact, we can pull. We're going to target fire the carriers. Does become a bit of a mess in here. You're all mined out of that but at some point, well, we get the archons gone. underneath, it's not coming back. and it appears he ran out of interceptors he as well. This time. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a mess. How many interceptors at the end? He was down to thirty. That may not have been the number we were looking for, or may it maybe was exactly. So the limit was 110. Which, clearly, we were fully fine with. Uh, at 109, so. Calculated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At some point, and we've all seen it, at some point you need air to counter the carriers. If you try to avoid it for too long, you're you're just waiting to die to the death ball. But the bright side of Protoss, or the dark side, depending on what you ask depending on who you ask or what perspective, is that you can also build carriers. Am I doomed? To just play only mirror matchups in the low APM challenge? Am I doomed to only play PvP and TVT and ZVZ? Is that... I, I, was, I was hoping One the uh, Terran trend got this. would continue, but another, another Protoss. Of course, I think mirror matchups are definitely what many players struggle with. Like, uh, more than the non-mirror matchups. So it's probably a good thing. Like having a baseline plan and uh, idea of where you want to go and why. Which is surprisingly difficult when they can have the same things as you. The summary is though, it isn't it isn't that complicated. You want to just build more of the same stuff most of the time. It isn't a pick ban. 
you rarely are there significantly different unit compositions. Like, for example, we saw last game, disruptors are good. But you actually have to get put a lot of work into them to make them more worth it than having, you know, like another immortal or something. Because they are expensive, they require a lot of investment. And, uh... Well... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make two adepts, and I'm gonna go in. And we're, this is a micro game. He has to know. Like, there's a reason we wall off like we do. I I feel obligated to to enlighten him as to why we wall off in this certain way. This will be a Stargate game as well for me. The Adept Stargate. This is your... I think I can do damage. This is a fully valid, like, secondary build, I think. Or, if you're into it, a main build. Because it is just a lot more micro-intensive in the early game. But you can just win the game with Adept Oracle. Very much so. Like, <laughs> Try to run these away. Hope we don't get caught by stalkers. He's building a dark shrine here. Which means I guess we can get a robo. He didn't actually build any units. Otherwise. Here are the probes. So this is why uh, you don't do this, specifically. I have an oracle now. Research is done. Your forces are just a little bit better. Wow. Yeah, so that's why you wall off and don't just rush DTs with no units. Thank you for helping us with that demonstration, Mr. Barcode, I guess. So yeah, there, there you go. ZZ Dance, Rex, Tim Air. Yep, don't don't do that. That's not that's not good. There are that is the That's one of the most difficult, I guess, to accept parts of StarCraft for a lot of players coming from different games or from different RTS. There are just things you have to do. You must Either wall off against adepts or respect them I'm sure dramatically. This one will be better. That you must. You have no choice. You will lose. If you don't lose, it's simply because they chose not to win the game. That is it. The game is the timings and the uh, requirements are that strict. Even below the top top level. Yeah, a lot of players come in thinking they can be creative and come up with their own ideas, and they can, and that's what co-op is for. But uh, there is a basic requirement for... And, and I doubt you're going to figure out something that someone like Hero or Zest or uh, Neeb has not figured out before. Uh, though if you do, I mean, it's happened before. But... It is exceedingly rare. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Nothing to worry about here. I scouted off of the pylon to block, as you know, is customary to block the naturey. But we need to make sure there's nothing else afoot. And we saw he's very likely at his third, unless he did a huge brain proxy. Like a rogue style. Which I doubt. We're going to set up that cyber core, leaving a one space gap. Remember that wall off guide that I managed to mess up multiple times last week or last time, but. Got the hang of it now. And this will be a Stargate opener. We are going to attempt the hero style. All the rage. Zerglings come out at about 2.30. Speed comes out at about 3.30. Maybe a few seconds later if their build is off, but you got to assume around those times. I'm going to start Adept. Warp Gate. A lot of pros will go Stargate before Warp Gate. I don't think it's worth it. There you go. 2.30. Your base is crumbling under enemy attack. Adept comes out. That will protect this probe. Second Adept for the wall. Now we're scouting to confirm the third. Gonna finish this wall off. There you go. Run away! There's a little bit of creep there. And we're gonna get a shield battery. As that is enough Zerglings to be somewhat concerned. In fact, that is so many Zerglings. Like, seeing more than eight Zerglings is worth a bit of a panic. I'm building a sentry. I'm going to have another probe here. More than eight Zerglings is a lot of drones that he did not build as well. Your base is under attack. Army under attack. Select all and panic. I don't think we need to do... Yeah, the Oracle exists. I'll, bring, I'll build another one for home on here. We're track. just going across the map. Warp gate's done. We're gonna get another pylon here, just in case. Gonna get another sentry, and another adept. We're just looking for drones. These are just zerglings, though. So it's not. Immortals, but, well, he's got a lair, so it might be a zergling drop of some kind. That's why I built the pylon on the edge here. I hold position the oracle so it focuses on the drones to be the more valuable targets. 11 kills are, is about 10 more kills than he can afford right now, so. Hmm. Enemies in your base. Look into your artosis pylons. Nidus it is. I didn't actually notice the Nidus, even though I technically saw it. I just, my head immediately went to Zergling Drop. The same idea applies, but... The beauty of Oracles is they do spell damage, which means building armor does not apply. Uh, a lot of buildings... Nidus Worms don't have much armor coming in, but... Or... I actually do they. I forget. At some point they were invulnerable. I don't know how much armor they have, but it doesn't matter, because spell damage goes through armor. Which makes Oracles one of the best. It takes a little more micro than a Void Ray, but it's cheaper, and it has more DPS. Uh, especially against buildings, even with the Void Ray charge. I guess the Void Ray charge might be better, but Oracles are just a better one-size-fits-all. This is an alert. Thank you, Maven. It's Maven is now chilling. Yes. Now, just having a solid setup and basic scouting will get you quite far. 
in the Diamond League. I think the reason so many players struggle is because they kind of freestyle the opener, and like now you're left picking up the scraps. Like there's Zerglings in the base, or a Nidus gets in, or you're not sure what you're looking for, and you find yourself trying to recover as opposed to prepare. And Protoss is all about preparation. You want to make it seem like they never had any chance. That's Remember, that's what most people cap. complain about. Okay, Protoss, maybe a little panic. Is it feels like you can't do anything, and that's just good preparation. You want to encourage those complaints. Gateway. You can technically wall with only two buildings here, though I would probably add a pylon to the wall. Just to make it... Oh, he... This is quite a long distance map. I should have sent the probe out earlier if I really wanted to block. And it's not the end of the world at all if you don't. This fight... What my probably is this all of my Dota teammates? Teammates is a very light definition for what it feels like when I play Dota. Don't worry, next game will be better, right, guys? Next game will be the good game. Yeah. Keep telling yourself that. Yep. So the awkward part is the fact that the wall is on the corner there, which means Zerglings can technically surround or nearly surround like a Zealot. So you gotta be a little careful of that. And that's why my third pylon will likely be at the wall. He's got his third base. He will likely have Zerglings in a moment. We're gonna make sure. I, I built my pylon so I have enough space to build more stuff on it. Because honestly, if he gets in the main, unlike I'll other metrics, attack. if he gets in the so main here, and panic. it's... Eh. I'm in trouble town anyways. Your base is so, under attack. It's mostly the focus is around making sure I can set up my base as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Your warriors are under attack. Base is under attack. Do you recall recall? What is this? Okay, so we're gonna do some real fancy moves here. Which is putting this shield battery behind it, but So it's just a bunch of Zerglings. Alright. I may lose if that adept doesn't come through. It did. I don't know what I expected. But we can set up gateways behind this. It's a depth pops out on the wrong side here. Oh my god, what have I done? Research all done. So he's trying to go through the shield battery, which is actually the best case scenario for me. All right. Oh. 
the problem is he's gotten through here, so. A reshielding. I got another oracle. Like I said, if he gets into the main, it's trouble town, but I don't have too many choices here. Part of this because I screwed up the wall off. You engage the enemy on purpose. But it looks like we're gonna live here. Got a little dicey. But he has no follow-up. In fact, I'm gonna build a void ray to help deal with these OVs he's lazily sent across. Yeah, that was way too much damage, but also is fine. Luminaire Fox is now because he has no real follow-up here. That was a ridic... Burn through. In fact, losing all these Zerglings is great for me here. That's actually... It looked bad, but that was a big mistake by him. He saw an opportunity, and of course he's building servings, right? So, yeah, yeah. That definitely could have been handled better, but it, I could have also lost the game outright, so. Army under attack. They're not immortals. But, well. We don't have that much energy here, but... Enough to keep him somewhat busy. Gonna make sure I have a shield battery. Gonna get a gate or two here. Army under attack. Select all and panic. The choice is gonna be charge and plus one. Does he even have a lair? I doubt it. Gonna get a robo. You can get a cannon out here. Yeah, if he had a lair, I might consider stalkers. Because he may, like, go mutas or something, but that was about as all in as you get. Looks like the transition is into... Now you're going to be very surprised to see this. It's uh, going to be a bunch of Zerglings. No lair. A mineral field has been depleted. Templar. So now what we do, we're gonna lock down with gates. Your research is complete. The base. We're gonna get a couple archons, a warp prism. I am gonna get blank, but and now we're gonna hit them. Mind out of that cluster, and still in the game. 
Nice. You took all the minerals from that. Make sure we're on hold position here, and in fact, I'm gonna slap a cannon. Cause uh, an upgrade's been completed. He has been incredibly annoying. I'll give him that. Right, Seventy probes. Easily enough to take another base. We're gonna set up a couple stasis wards. I'm gonna have the void ray try something here. Let's see if he saw this coming or not. He was not at the watchtower. I wanna just make him look any other direction right now. You engage the enemy? On purpose? Pull some of these back. Yeah, he was trying to... I guess he was trying to rush lurkers or something, but we successfully got him to turn around. It got a lot dicier than it needed to. I miss my grid a lot, but not enough, and that's like why you set up the wall in a certain way. To leave yourself space to continually have a fallback position. Did we overdo it on the micro? No! Oh. God damn it. I, saw, I was hoping we'd make it the whole day. But the people, the Zerglings, forcing it out. That's three. We're rounding up. Oh, gee willikers. Gosh darn it. That Zergling loving. Winter Gaming has gifted three subs to What a generous. Thirty-three kill Oracle. That's a lot of drones. You know, right before it, right under where it says thirty-three kills, it tells you what it killed, and it was twenty-eight zerglings and five drones. So I guess that it, that is a lot of drones. Not to be that guy, but. They write my name. If I did it all again, I swear I'll do it all just the same. Scotty, take it home. Is that a Zerg? Well, I guess it's Zerg Day. So much for the Terrans. Just the thing in chat. Don't don't read the chat. What are you doing? Oh, here we go again. Now we know how important it is to set up that wall correctly here. We've learned. I'm gonna build it a little further forward to give myself space. Because I ended up having to deal with that concave. Which is less than ideal. Alright. Well, he does not appear to be attempting anything, so that means we're gonna do that. We're gonna build one more probe. And we're gonna check for a spawning pool. That overlord timing tells me everything I need to know. Alright, we cancel the pylon. Come on down. 
He's got gas that he just started mining. He's making six Zerglings right now. But, poor choice on this map. This is how you're supposed to wall off. You see, this is a much better, like, setup in general. So, he thought I was Zerg, so he went for an early pull. Which is like, hmm. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go ahead and bring a few of these out just to make things interesting. I realize now I haven't mined any gas. So this is very bad. I'm gonna lose. Probably. Because I did not mine any gas to build an adept. And then I cancelled. They're attacking your base. Give them some. So that's not good. Um We gotta keep more Zerglings from getting in. He hasn't expanded yet, so... Army under attack. They're not immortals, but, well... Yeah, we use a bit of mineral walk action there. We're gonna leave enough space to build a shield battery behind here. Underscore Doran is now chilling. Here is to keeping Winter employed. I'm pretty sure I can jam an adept in that corner. So it appears our entire day will be just defending the Zerg Rush, so like. I don't think that's a bad thing to have practice in. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need a retreat battery, so. I just handicapped myself on purpose, clearly. I expect the Banelings now, is the situation. Yeah, a lot of Banelings. Your warriors are under attack. Yeah. And we don't have the gas for, oh, really anything. Hmm. So, mm is crumbling under enemy attack. Your research is complete. Well, we may lose the main. I can't... I don't really want to. That would be quite bad. Your base is under attack. Base is under attack. Do you recall recall? Yeah. Shield batteries doing what shield batteries do. Well, could have been worse. Here we are again. Can you get out? Okay. 
Does he just go for mainlings? I'm going to go ahead and put a pylon on the corner of my main here. I'm supply blocked a little. Can you believe his transition was into a bunch more Zerglings? I don't know, that was pretty advanced tactics. Is he gonna make some Banelings? I keep thinking, like in the back of my mind, like it's not gonna just be a bunch more Zerglings. And that, kid, that, that mindset is good to have, but not very practical. <sighs> Looks like he's got, oh my god, what a crazy idea, a bunch more Zerglings. You have engaged the enemy. Well, once again, it could have gone better. God, these Zerglings. I am in a pretty intense micro situation. Wow. Wow. It's bad. Everybody could just, you know, go more than 12 drones without making a spawning pool. Set. 20 set. 20, 27. So that's six. This is an alert. Wonder Gaming has gifted six subs to viewers. Like, so a lot of these, if I had just hard walled off with like a gateway, I, this is another example of do as I say and not as I do. If you hard wall off with a gateway, uh, this is an alert. or just, Put a little bit more commitment into actually defending. I'm always... Uh, yeah, make sure to... If you're watching this on YouTube, you know we have a join button for memberships, by the way, now? Yeah, how exciting. In our weekly streams on tentatively Fridays. I'm not committing to always Fridays. It's There's a lot of streaming I do, but... Oh my god. Good news, it's September. Unfortunately... September does not affect gift subs, at least in this in this fashion. Um, unless I want to gift like higher tier subs, which do cost more. It's just to get it, but it's essentially like losing money if you don't spend more money to get the the discount. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's how it works. It's like how when you build a nexus and then cancel it, you get 300 out of 400 minerals back. What a savings. It's like, shouldn't you have just finished the nexus if I... Shh. You got this. One way or another. Shh. Nobody asked. A Terran. 
I'm actually, I'm done. I'm been cheesed so many times. I'm, I'm coming around to this idea, which is scouting off a pylon in every matchup. I think we are at the level here in the upper half of Diamond where you should be able to recognize if shenanigans are afoot and respond appropriately. My issue, as you've seen the last couple games, is responding, is understanding what's happening and under committing. I think a lot of people have issues with over committing. Like, they see a spawning pool at a relatively normal timing and then end up like building a forge to go for cannons, stuff like that. Okay, so he's got a relatively late gas, actually. That's a scouting probe. Scout some probes. That's it. So I'm not going for a cybercore first, but instead, a nexus. He does not like... Okay, we're going to poke him for a bit. Because he shouldn't have a reaper. Particularly quick. The Reaper usually comes out, for reference, right around uh, 2 minutes to 2 minutes and 5 seconds. Assuming they are on point with it. But, like, you have to assume that. Alright, I'm gonna build that pylon on the low ground here. Let's see if we can... Uh... Ladies and gentlemen... We got him. GG. We're gonna scout up, pull a few probes here, build. Oh my. He may actually kill a couple probes. Which is very sad for me. I could have maybe delayed this. I'm gonna get under attack. an adept here. Mortals. Well. We're gonna go hide that probe in the corner. I should have gone for an adept first. It was greedy to go for a stalker. All right, three minutes, three gates. 3.30, three gates at the latest. We're going to just Your queue up two obs. Under enemy attack. The first one, its plan is to go scout what my opponent's doing. The second one is to protect me. Same idea with this pylon I'm building here. Research is done. I'm gonna patrol the probe a where better. a widow mine drop can come out. Notice how specific I am on saying that. We're gonna get a robotics bay, a sentry here. Another stalker. And as we get to about 40 probes, I'm getting two gases. And we're not even worried about really expanding here. All we're doing is getting two bases set. What are you doing, observers, you fools? There's the widow mine drop which comes out between 4.30 and 5 minutes. Army under attack. Select all and pen. This was a bit of a mistake for me, but we see he's adding more barracks. I'm going to hotkey in the observer with this. Can I get another pylon over here? Going to let him come in. He's trying to distract me. Get rid of that. He tried to be very cute with it. 
And there you go. I got an immortal here. In fact, at this point, select all army just to make sure I have everything together. And we're gonna get that third started. Ooh, a liberator. It's one stalker. Another observer is at, I mean, another medevac is heading out. At about six minutes, twilight, forge, gate, gate. We're at 50 probes. Gonna have a shield battery back here, because this is to cover both sides. Convenient. I don't. We have another Widowmind drop? I assume. Or his army is moving out and he just rallied it, but. I, I don't. I don't know about that. That one was weird. Like, I. <laughs> They're attacking your base. Charge. Give plus one. Charge. Rally out. Just a single stalker. You engage the enemy? I'm gonna move Our this purpose? up a little. We're gonna move one zealot to that area where I have no info. You can kind of see it. Shield battery. He's taking a third here. You can see how many units he has down there. I'm gonna get another forge. Another robo. Yep, we're gonna go two robo. Though I might just go back to Immortals. You took all the minerals from that cluster, you thief. At 65 probes. Research complete, but have we learned it's anything? It's time to add some more pylons and gates. I like adding him at the gnat if possible, which is less likely to get sniped. A mineral field has been depleted. We saw the army move out, so here's what I'm going to do. We saw the army move out on the left. Oh, that's a planetary. Huh. Mind out of that cluster. Interesting. Still in the game? Nice. I'm going to move my units a little. Your warriors are under attack. There's the main army. You have engaged the enemy. More upgrades. Templar archives. Research or Colossi. Finish, but I'm still Three Colossi with trade. plus one are pretty much untouchable for Marines. Before that, they can kind of fight. Mm. You see a drop towards the main. What I predict is he's going to try to distract complete. again. Oh, he's got the main army through here? All right. Enemies in your base. Looking for your he opened up the rock, so that's kind of interesting. Force field. We're gonna take Army another base. Select all and panic. I can just a move this. He has no um anti colossus. So. Like, you don't want to just have Colossi, but... What happened here? You engage the enemy? On purpose? Hmm. More gates. The most important thing. Oh, shit. Run away! Well, we'll just get some immortals now. Not caught a little. But at what cost? I'm gonna get a shield upgrade after the first armor. We'll get blink Mineral just to make sure we gone, have it. And it's not coming back that back over there. K 
cannon, shield battery, cannon battery. Woman camera TV, you know. You're all mined out of that. Your base is under attack. With the army over there, I shouldn't need to recall. Static defense is just for buying time. Overcharge. Army under attack. They're not immortals. The next piece well. is the uh, Dark Shrine at this stage. You have engaged the enemy. How many probes? 88 probes. Stop building probes. Too many probes. Upgrades finished up. We've got 30 probes on this base. Let's redistribute. Some immortals. Your warriors are under attack. Shift click one two three. Shift Base click, is one, under two, attack. Three. Do you recall recall? This is when usually ideally you get a stargate just in case they try any of those crazy things. I'm gonna warp Army in some zealots just to have attack. some defense over here, and we're gonna work around the right side. Rally the uh, robotics. Upgrade completed. Your forces are you and your base is crumbling. Under under research cancel. Mind out of that cluster. And still in the game? Nice. Because we can tell he's not expanding here because this adept's been hanging out the whole time. A mineral field has been depleted. He's got a planetary there. We're gonna control click the Colossi and move back a bit. But they aren't even the real threat to this army here. The Immortals are doing what they do best. Just bashing through everything. All right, I will kill the SCVs here, if you insist. I just wanted to see. Your warriors are under attack. Oh, this is a bit dicey. took all the minerals from that you have engaged the enemy and this is why we build so many gates by the way mineral enemies in your base looking for your artosis pylons because Select the cost effectiveness head. of the ground army is just not great we, we need a you huge ridiculous amount purpose. they're attacking your base give them some trouble Gonna bring some Your of those units over here. Gone, it's not coming back. Army under attack. Some They're of the immortals, immortals on the other side well. of them. Repower my robo, Your please. Are under attack. Base is under attack. Upgrade's been Do completed. You recall, recall. GG. Talasa always two shot marines. I mean, the plus damage also is more damage to Marauders. It's not like literally they look at them and melt. You don't play this game on a piece of paper, though if you did, Extended Thermal Lance would melt them. It's just being able to compete with the damage I'll put in the Metavacs, because remember the Metavacs heal a certain amount between the hits. So if you do more damage with the initial hit, that's more for the Metavacs to heal, etc, etc. But plus one scales, especially with splash damage units that benefit from weapon upgrades, like Archons and Colossi, even more.
So it's less of a, on paper, if you roll a d20 and you get over a 12, well then plus one kicks in. And more of like the bio army just can't really get close without taking critical damage. Did we overdo it again? No, we're okay. I did uh, go into immortal cinem cinematic mode. All right. Lieutenant Rico the Sundering with 11 kills, including 11 marauders, 7 marines, 3 vikings, and a tank. 3 vikings? I didn't come down here and fight me. Rico, shut up! They're flying units. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's why it's so hard to... Like, a lot of people are used to playing games, especially if you play things like MOBA games. Or even other RTS. Where counters... Like, for example, in um, Age of Empires, some units just do essentially no damage to others. Like, uh, a skirmisher in AoE 2 I'm sure it'll be is designed to counter spearmen and archers. It has like a plus 15 damage bonus. Its base amount of damage is somewhere like four against units that have 100 HP. So it does almost nothing. In SC2, there's nothing like that. There are units that clearly counter other units, but it's there are no incredible, like Marines and Stalkers and I guess technically things like Hydralis can kill everything. And the amount of damage they can do is a lot more than even, even against units they can counter. Like you get the right angle get enough units, and marines especially are a great example of this. They can counter everything. And that's, for better or worse, how uh, SC2 works. And that is a mindset you kind of gotta grow out of if you're coming from other RTS or even, like, campaign or something. Because every unit is very good, even when it's up against units that are supposed to counter it. It's all about the quantity of units and like their upgrades and their reinforcements and all that compared to they're attacking your base. Uh, specifically which units you build. And that's why we're focused on unit compositions that give you those all-around options. Like Immortal Archon Charge Lot, the CIA build, is particularly great at that. Because it gives you basic anti-air, great anti-ground, it's relatively cheap and easy to build. Your base is crumbling under So attack. that is the focus of the low APM challenge, is on units that you get, essentially you get them out the box, and maybe uh, you gotta tune them up a little bit, like uh, get charged or something like that, but, and then you're good to go. Yeah, like, if we were being, quote, realistic, which I'm not sure is the priority in SC2. Marines killing battle cruisers does seem optimistic. Um, let alone anything else. <laughs> That's just not and how it do. In your base. We're looking for your artosis pylons. Kind of like how arrows do no damage to buildings in Age of Empires. Like, well, yeah, this obviously. But under attack. Select all. if they had Gauss rifles, though, maybe they'd do better. Base is under attack. Do you, you know what? That's probably recall. a good point. Your base alert. is under attack. Thank you. Fast upgrade is now chilling. Please finish Adept. You think we'll get to the point where it's not just a bunch of Zerglings? I don't know. I, I dare not dream. So I'm going to keep this probe in the wall in case he tries to be clever here. Because some players will try that sneaky Zergling run by. Or something of the sort. Which he probably could have done because my probe's in the wrong spot anyways. All right, back to the game. We're looking for a third. If he doesn't have it, then we have to start... Okay, well, it's three and a half minutes. He really should at least be thinking about a third base here. So... I'm going to sacrifice the Adept. 
Yeah, it's gonna die. But you know, I'm I'm getting the sneaking suspicion. We may be in store for some more spark. <laughs> he built a hatch in his main. I'm gonna start putting pylons around the outside here. Because Zergling Drop slash Nidus is a common follow-up with especially like with extra hatches early. Your research is I mean a macro hatch early is not unheard of, but it's rare. It's rare that that's just like my opener. You know, like like that's just something you go for. I'm not saying it's impossible. What I'm saying is it's unlikely. You engage the enemy? On purpose? We got our scouticles. Lair is done. Interesting. So whatever it is. Getting a stalker on the edge of the main. Couple more stalkers here as the Nidus suspicions grow. Don't rally my probes there. Twilight Forge here. Hmm, which one? Okay. I'm just going to keep building oracles. Am I stuck? I've done this several times. Let's see. Give me a scout. Ah! Well. The focus is going to be on getting charge. Here. He's got a lot of drones, so I gotta stop thinking like he's about to zergling all in me and start thinking like roaches. So where you put the shield batteries is incredibly important for making it not more difficult for your units to defend. We're gonna look for a fourth base here. Which is taken. And tag those roaches. I'm just gonna have the safety cannon. We're gonna put all the oracles together here. Spotter pylons. Your forces are just a little bit better. You took all the minerals from that cluster, you thief. Chrono boosting out an immortal. Where are his roaches, though? Mineral field depleted. Upgrade is all done. Mineral patch is gone. We're gonna put this not observer back. over there. I'm still taking a look around. I'm gonna get the blink. Line up another base. Queue up a revelation. Make sure I don't get supply blocked at this most critical of times. How many gates? Never enough. But as many as we're gonna get for now. Gonna get a few stasis just out on the map. 
I'm sending out. He's, yeah, he's gonna hit this base. You have engaged their Makes a lot of sense. We're sending out some uh, defensive things. We're bringing the oracles back. We're gonna activate them and just target fire, and then just run on in. Keeping on this is why keeping the oracles alive is so important, because anything to keep them busy at this stage is huge. Army under attack. Select all and panic. Mind out of that cluster, and still in the game. Chrono. Nice. More gate. We'll, we'll throw it. We'll throw a dark shrine in there. Just gonna patrol the oracles for now. Need to make sure I have my bases set up well. Research yeah, we got all day. Too down. many there. Gonna get the gases there. Get the immortal. Three in gas. And now we should be okay. That's not complete. a super pylon. Well, now, ah, nobody saw that. So now the big risk. Well, the only thing that threatens me are lurkers and broodlords. So. Well, let's see what we got here. Continue Army those attack, attack upgrades, armor well. upgrades. Mineral field depleted. You Build more immortals. Just queuing them up at home. Your warriors are under attack. Most of his armies over there. We're sending the charge lots in. Gonna queue up another charge lot run by on the other side. Just gotta keep track of the army. Never move army the main attack. army out Select until you know where his attack. army is. That's key. Yep. We're gonna send these guys in. More you upgrades on purpose. A mineral field this has been alert. created. Wasn't twas now chilling. Less than three love you. I'm gonna get a tag on the army here. I'm gonna get my war prism headed towards the main. You may have defenses. We'll see. You took all the minerals from that cluster, you thief. We're gonna send a bunch of DTs in. Take this base. We need more observers as well. I will get Storm. If it comes to that, we'll see. Army under attack. They're not all mined out of that. Pretty decent choke. Warp Prism. We're gonna send the DTs Upgrades into this finished. base. He's got lurkers, so working for carriers. Him. Going for the lurker den, maybe before he gets the upgrade to them. We'll see. Moving this way. Over here. Whoop! Don't touch those. Got the lurker den. Army under attack. They're not immortals. Well. You engage the enemy? On purpose? Mineral patch is Plus gone. one air. And it's not coming back. Make sure I get rid of this. An upgrade's been completed. Got several more immortals in it. He's pretty good about respreading that creep. I'm good for that. Research finished. But I'm still waiting on high second. Starting the carriers. 
Yes, it pains me, but it's the correct move, and that's what we're focused on here. Army under attack. Select all and panic. Revelation. This you have engaged the enemy. Dark underscore dragon underscore 553 has gifted one sub to viewers. You took all the minerals from that cluster, you thief. Work around this way. Mind out of that cluster. And still in the game? Nice. Your warriors are under attack. the enemy on purpose no more gas left lurkers in left out i'm sure it didn't go to waste right come back in back Building more carriers. We have one more lurker. Get rid of that. Army under attack. Select all and panic. Mineral field depleted. More archons. A mineral field has been depleted. No Upgrade completed. You're all mined out of that mineral field. Make sure we have the gas. Mineral patch is gone, and it's not coming back. We're not fighting that. So what we need to do now is slowly get rid of this army in favor of the carriers. Plus three. As we've kind of forced them into a... Fully lurker army, so... This is an alert. Mavericks 29 is now chilling. It's your carrier. Don't judge me. Freeze up a little more for carriers here. You're all mined out of that mineral field. I'm gonna go ahead, get the detection. Mind out of that cluster. And still in the game? Nice. Your warriors are under attack. Make sure we get the revelation and get out. Enemies in your base. Looking for your artosis pylons. You have engaged the enemy. Unfortunately, it's kind of a checkmate situation where either he does a lot with his ground army or he's just constantly on the run from the carriers. Army under attack. Select all and pack. Oh, there's a spire. A mineral field. Army under attack. They're not immortals, but, well...
Mineral field depleted. So, I don't think this should be too much of an issue. Mineral patch is gone, and it's not coming back. You engage the mineral field has been on purpose. I don't think doing nothing is the Upgrade correct is description. Assimilator's exhausted. Your warriors are under attack. Yeah. I mean, he's not wrong. You have engaged the enemy. And G -G. he's not wrong. There's a reason he stabilized, though. It's because I stopped pressing the issue in order to transition into carriers. So, I mean, once you start going lurkers and they're spotted. Oh my god, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Praise be to Dan. Without Dan's monologue, we would have been in trouble. But... The limit was 110. Shout out to Dan, who's shouting into the void. Classic Dan. One or two more games for this episode. Wait, I I don't know how far we are off of uh, Diamond 1. Uh, we can check. Of course, the Diamond to Master's Purgatory. But, let's see. Diamond 1 is 3867. So one or two more games should be right, assuming we continue on this trajectory. Ah, so now we have P. Imba. Mm. He wasn't wrong to build the lurkers. You might be like, I, I saw a few One comments of like, well, you, you should this. you should say what to do for him. Honestly, I don't know. Besides playing like Sarah, essentially, once once you're kind of in a weird like once you're hemmed into building lurkers, and they know how to build carriers, I don't have an answer. It is. Essentially, you, you sit back, you build a bunch of spores and corruptors, and you hope for the best, really. Like, that is my experience. I know it's not the uh, most heartening advice, but that or you just go for it. Like, you try to jam their lurk those lurkers up in their grill before they can react, and that sometimes has some success. Two gas. You right. have engaged the enemy. Interesting. Two gas means some sort of tech. I'm gonna go for cyber core before expand. He's locking the probe in here, which is interesting to say the least we're still gonna expand but with a wariness about us that's key because he should be building that factory very soon and if he doesn't in his base well yeah well there it is so far he has avoided building a reactor which is interesting your warriors are under attack.
this is actually a little it, it's a little counterintuitive but this is when a stargate becomes very strong because the stargate essentially it, it can potentially counter anything that comes out on the other side there I'm gonna get another dip now it's not super consistent about it I have to recall the adept, unfortunately. <laughs> Not ideal. I didn't think he'd build a reaper right behind, but here we are. Another gate or two. Two. It's gonna be two. That's not the same adept. This is a scouting pylon, pretty much. What I'm guessing, and the most common build, Army under is, uh... They're not immortals. Well, well, I would have been wrong. Is Whittle Mines. So... Oh, he does have an expo. We're gonna go with Phoenix's... Frontal Boost. Interesting, he got that cyclone. Little mines with drilling claws, to be uh, clear, and a key point. So I'm actually this is just a defensive stargate we're sitting on right now. I'm gonna go for the robo once I get the gas momentarily. I have two phoenixes now, which means I can potentially deny a lock on, so. Let's go try to figure out what he's up to. Get the gases. Is that another factory? Crazy. It's mech then, eh? I'm gonna get a fourth. Well, army under attack. Select all. Hard to tell. I don't think I'll kill this, but if I do, that's always nice. Hmm. I actually ran out of lock of time on it. Well, the robos become more important here. Forge. Get a twilight. The key is not to be afraid. This is not that scary. Of, like, what he's doing. It is a little confusing, but Immortal Archon Charge Lot should still be serving us pretty well. We just gotta get there. Laid the third command center. He has a widow mine right there. Thank you for the free Hellion. So yeah, we're gonna have to deal with that. That means I'm just gonna get a uh, an Oracle. The Oracle is actually the most reliable uh, widow mine detector. I'm gonna put this kind of far out. And some more gateways. My Chrono Boost keeps maxing out. Charge. 
It's actually the most important upgrade right Mineral now. Patch is gone, and it's not coming back. I'm gonna send out a, an adept to each of those areas. A couple sentries here. Three is my go-to number. I'm gonna get a couple cannons. You're all mine get down one in each mineral, mineral line here. We got some tanks. On purpose? I like hotkeying the uh, Oracle on six. I gotta be a little careful of losing it. The supply block. Plus one is done. Charge is not though, so. We need that charge. Research all done. You took all the minerals from that cluster. Shield battery overcharge here. Your base is crumbling. Ooh, that's a strong push. Get some you of the probes out. The They're attacking your base. Give them some trouble. I know he has widow mines here, but I should be able to undercut some of the tanks before the widow mines trigger again. Don't want to lose this base. I have no detection here. This part of the issue. Those widow mines are going to trigger again. Your warriors are under attack. The enemy? I'm gonna purpose. lose the Nexus. That's real unfortunate. Enemies in your base. Looking for your Artosis pylons. Your base is crumbling under enemy attack. Army under attack. They're not immortals. But, well. Well, that could have gone better. He lost his raven. How many probes? 58 probes? Yeah, could have gone worse, though. We're going to need Colossi. That's a lot of tanks. Yeah, I don't know about the Colossi idea. Upgrade complete, but at what cost? It's a little late to try for Sky Toss, so... a lot of tanks. Feels scary, man. I didn't realize how many probes we had here. Archons are a huge deal. I don't think I can make too many more workers. Archons are everything, actually, right now. I 
I can't let those tanks siege. Too late. He's got Thors. Your base is under attack. You have engaged that is the a enemy. lot of tanks. There's no bad targets for mortals here. Army under attack. Select all and panic. Mineral field. Live for now. There's still a widow mine here, of course. Mine out of that cluster. And still in the game? Nice. Mineral patch is gone, and it's not coming back. A mineral field has been depleted. A warp prism. Mineral field depleted. Doesn't have anything protecting us. You took all the minerals. I think we're gonna get some ruptures here. Against Thor's disruptors are kind of your option. I bet he already has this, but gotta give it a shot. He doesn't. So on the bright side, he doesn't have that base. On the downside, almost everything else. But army under attack. They're not immortals, but, well, mined out of that cluster, and still in the game? Nice. No more gas. I'm sure it didn't go to waste, right? Mineral patch is gone, and it's not coming back. SCVs were coming. Interesting. I think now we can think about carriers. That's always got to be in the back of your mind. No gas left in that geyser, but cannons only cost minutes. I'm gonna get that plus one, because now he's back to uh, these ground units. I'm gonna leave a stalker there. A mineral field has been depleted. Plus three attack. few Archons can really soften up, like they can minimize the damage potential by a lot, so. You have engaged the enemy. Army under attack. Select all and pair. 
Unfortunately, the one thing that he needed was ghosts. Ghosts are the best mech unit. But without ghosts, the immortals still have their shield. And uh, it makes it a lot easier. Though, that, that push was incredibly scary. I was definitely very concerned. Like, if he hadn't, he kind of threw some of it away. Upgrade is all done. But, uh, if he hadn't let the tanks die, then we were in a lot more trouble than we are now. I have one more oracle. Army under attack. They're not immortals. Well... I need to make sure I have some damage upgrades. An upgrade's been completed. You engage the enemy? On purpose? Plus two shields. are under attack. I believe that's his main base there. Mineral field depleted. So we're focused. Yeah, he's gonna do the big counter now. Oh. You have engaged the enemy. And then the finishing move is is gathering. All right. Yeah, it's just as it feels like he's stabilizing. Nice. Am I gonna walk into tanks here? Base is under attack. Army under attack. Yeah, call. They're not call. now. That's the commander I've been waiting. We kind of threw him back into. Woof. Yeah. Well, he was playing unranked. The amount of unranked players is quite high. 140. Oh my. It was bad. That was one of those that I do think was a bit of a dick move because your average diamond player should die to that. That was a good push. Well, maybe they wouldn't have because they would have built more units instead of being so greedy like I like to do. But that was a very strong timing. Unfortunately, not followed up by anything but select all army. But I, I this is an alert. was quite scared. Demi Hendrick is now chilling. Ah, <sighs> that was thirty. Oh God. Uh, thank you guys. Well, on the, I guess, on the bright side, for the people. <sighs> this is an alert. Lucky you. Wonder Gaming has gifted seven subs to viewers. Even Zergling's getting it. I see Zergling eighty-seven. All right. One more, and then we're going to do uh, a Q&A. And then uh, wrap it up for today. Hopefully with Diamond 1 
in our sights. But hopefully you've enjoyed the low APM challenge before you fall asleep or click off. Like, subscribe, join, follow, talk, re-talk. I don't, I don't know what they do on TikTok. I'll have to ask Loco. Yeah, I like to talk. Personally. I just talk all day. Another Terran. We got a great mix today, actually. We started out with a couple PvPs. One way or another. Plenty of Zergs. And personally... I mean, the basic build of PvP, but I think uh, Diamond Protoss... You know what? I know better than you, Diamond Protoss. Every Diamond Protoss comes to me saying like, Oh, my problem is on countering Widowmine drops. Or it's on dealing with Lurkers. It's like, no, your problem is you can't place your first three pylons in the correct spot. That's your problem. It's like, no, but like when I get to the lake, it's like, you should never got... This is an angry coach. I'm sorry, it's bleeding over. Um... Well, I think the problem with a lot of uh, Protoss at this level is just getting that baseline. Like, I would never have won those Zergling Rush games, those PvP games especially, without having a solid setup in my base. Like, having the pylons in the right spot to warp into flank or defend, uh, to set up my tech so it wasn't vulnerable to drops or pushes. A lot of players feel like they kind of end up with their base and then they're like well i guess this is it like <laughs> but there's no reason mm -hmm. one gas we can pretend to block the base for a moment get the nexus i'm gonna hold position a probe so he can't block my gas we're gonna do a little bit of fancy patrol path You engage the enemy? On purpose? Alright. I do appreciate someone who will do this, by the way. Someone who's like, alright, whatever. My buildings can fly. I, I, I appreciate just the decisive action there. We're chrono boosting the adept. I'm not getting caught. Like almost every game today, I've gotten caught by the Reaper. Start the robo. Because remember, we're going robo. The Stargate was a response to cheese. It's the anti cheese build. You might think of the robo as the anti cheese build. It's not, because just getting an observer already keeps you from getting units. Uh, you can both defend and scout and potentially attack with the Stargate all in one. What's not to live? I'm actually canceling the shade. I'm not risking the Reaper coming in. Uh, the second shade I will definitely send out, though. And then three minutes, three gates. Just queuing up two obs. Sending out my Widowmine Scout Probe. A scout up there. Gonna build one sentry. I saw a bunch of stuff. That was pretty sus. Mm hmm. That's a lot of Marines. So it looks like more Marines than you get off of one reactor there. Alright. That was a bit of an accident, I will admit. But we have the OB coming out. And going Research across here. Done. Your forces are just I am almost better. certain at this stage that it isn't a Widowmine drop. 
I am 90% sure. Getting a an immortal. Making sure... Well, where are the rest of those marines? Probably in a medevac, though. Nope, waiting on the ramp. I just started the fact... Oh, we need shield batteries now. Move this ob back. Sir, I know you know that I know about your thing. So since I know that you know that I know, you know I'm going to be prepared. And I know that. We're going to get a forge here. And we're just focused on Colossi and Extended Thermal Lance. I'm not bothering with another base yet. That is a lot. And that's why we got the shield batteries. I want to warp in one more sentry. I'm going to go up to six gates. And essentially, all, all I want to do right now is make sure he doesn't get up my ramp. Okay. We'll take the third. He's DJ going home. Merlin just donated twenty dollars. Thank you, Merlin. Hit him with the shield toss. Well, I'm not gonna hit him. I'm just gonna slowly put him into a chokehold where I have total map control, and he can't do any of his fancy medevac drops without meeting units that he can't deal with. But yeah, also that. Which is just. The usual. Research finished, but I'm still waiting on high sec auto trash. So many units. That really need to be a Colossus. I may just decide. Yeah, without a shield battery, it's quite risky here. It's gonna come down to force fields, and that's not usually worth it. I'm just going to bring the Colossi forward. We're going to get the Twilight here. He sends the Metavex to the main. We're going to have a Colossus there. We'll also have Colossi here. That's why we had that OBS. He has tanks now, but... Eight minutes, eight gates. Get the forge, more pylon. Honestly. Twilight done. Get the charge. Keep one, two, three, four, five stalkers in the main. Get these Upgrades gas. Finished up. Cannon, battery, cannon. Plus two. They can't help it. All right, it's not my fault. Gonna get the uh, archons. Get another OBS. We're gonna need it.
They can't help it. That observer paying off. He's decided to quadruple down on the drops. But this observer, plus looking at the minimap. There's no easy way to train yourself to look at the minimap. This is a very common question. I suggest essentially doing what the AI does and just having a unit on patrol near the corner of the map so you get used to it. And you don't, like, you find yourself constantly glancing. Like, even a, even an observer, but I'm going to do that right now. And still in but the I'm just, attack. like, after, Select that's one there. thing that I definitely is part of the reason the I can do the low APM challenge, is, you took unless I'm looking cluster, away from feet. the screen, I'm probably not going to miss anything on the minimap. Like, I'm going to see the drops go out, I'm going to notice it, and I don't even notice Upgrade myself complete. noticing it, what at risk of sounding cost? a bit, um... Uh, bold, a humble, field has I don't know, been like... A lot of people say I'm incredibly humble. Your warriors are under attack. I'm one of the most Upgrade humble people completed. they've ever met, are just a so... Usually with Terrans, there's going to be a... I don't know if he has enough supply to do anything else here. Is the thing. There's some ghosts, but he just doesn't have a ground army. <laughs> is the problem. The ghosts were a good choice. Them. Army under attack. They're not immortal. The recall was horrible, well, by the way. Oh, no boost. More gates. Dark shrine. Honestly, could use a few more probes. Seventy-five is good. Not great. It's solid, but I can definitely afford more. You can't, you gotta respect the Terran army as well. Like, with ghosts, the army just, literally half or more of your HP can be gone before the fight starts. You engage the enemy? So, depending on what units you're using, of course. Army under attack. Select all and panic. Your warriors are under attack. You have engaged the enemy. I'll be ready to leave with the Archons. have the charge lock counter we'll just go into the natural Jolly show them is now chilling. your upgrade is complete this should force the issue overcharge Well, the charge lots did pretty well. You engage the enemy? On purpose? 
out. Your warriors are under attack. We killed the gnat, forced the entire army home. The scouting pylon becomes the support pylon. This is actually, it kind of feels like playing Protoss is like playing Terran before Legacy of the Void. Terran's Your job was just to constantly around. counter and jazz. grind down so that way they could never bring their army to bear. But with Ghost Viking for Terran, they actually have the better army. It's just hard to control, hard to put together, but it is uh, in many ways a much more effective army, especially if the Protoss doesn't have disruptors. Uh, and disruptors are hit or miss, so. So the map is dark and we're Mill turned. Is How gone. do we get over there it's so quick? Back. You have engaged the enemy. <laughs> you engage the enemy? On purpose? Mineral field. Get the sensor tower. You've exhausted the best being gathered. I guess when you, you don't you don't see where he's going. Thief. Mind out of that cluster. And still in the game? Nice. Do we have the upgrades? Alright. I never got a Select ship weapons upgrades. You're all mined out of that field. If you get field EMP'd, been depleted. Just backing off. No, I've never seen this screen before. I'll see. That was a pretty advanced, but we may be uh, looking at a new limit. Indeed. The limit is raised to 120. Not that we needed it, but... I think that was about as clear cut of a, a macro PVT as you're going to get, especially against the bio opener as opposed to the mines. But what a nice spread today. Uh, we had three PVPs, uh, three PVZs, and four PVTs. So rarely can I plan this out quite so well, but today was a solid day. Uh, the summary as we get up to this level of diamond is, is one, preparation. Okay, I know, I know. Uh, Protoss players are, are usually known for their uh, spontaneity. But even players like Zest, uh, Max Pex, and Hero, uh, a big key is already knowing what the options are beforehand. Like, you can't search your brain for it. It's got to just be there already. And, and that means setting up, most importantly, your pylons. Pylon, efficiency, and necessary infrastructure safety. I, like, you're going to see in the commander mode match between myself and Pig, where we did that Archon commander mode, um, my feelings on when our, our Protoss player, who was Diamond, by the way, just continually decided the best place to put all of his buildings and his tech against a Terran Archon using Metavax was uh, on the back of the main uh, with a single pylon powering like a twilight, three gates, and two forges. Like, not not ideal um, <laughs> is, is one way to put it. Also, knowing when and why you go for counterattacks. Yes, charge lot, run buys, warp ends, they're a huge deal. They, they win you most of the later games. But what? Like, you don't just do it for the sake of it. Or you don't just send the charge lots in and then that's it. Like, that's the end. Are you moving out with your army? Is he moving out with his army? If he's sitting in his base, and you're sitting in your base, and you send 20 charge lots in, what does that accomplish? What does that accomplish? You lost 20 charge lots. Uh, which is not, not super cheap. And that's something I see as well. Like, a lot of players will do counterattacks, except it's not a counterattack if it's your only attack. It's just a bad attack. Okay. 
angry coach bleeding over a little bit. Um, but that was what I, I was trying to focus on uh, in the longer games today. Also, you saw how important it was to set up those walls against Zerglings. So many Zergs just so graciously testing them today. Um, and the walls failing eventually, but costing the Zerg so much, they can't recover. And, and knowing what to prioritize there. I don't pretend I'm the most artisanal and experienced wall constructor, but knowing where you can jam a zealot, where the Zerglings can get in, and when they, uh, when they can't, is like 70% of it. So, it isn't that difficult um, to rank up, honestly, at risk of, of confirming or angering other people uh, in other races or protest themselves, I do think it is easiest to get to this level as Protoss from, a, uh, like, as a Protoss uh, for most people. The thing is, because a lot of people go in with that expectation, especially uh, people who've only played Protoss, they don't actually put in the groundwork. Protoss takes the most preparation of any race. If you want that success, that balance complaint level success, you need to be you need to know what your plan is before the game starts. For Zerg, it's it's simple, okay? You're going to go in, you're going to build some queens and uh, we'll see if it gets past that point. For Terran, it's very simple as well. You can use the same build in every matchup. Your buildings fly around, you're a little off center, it's not perfect, whatever. You can adapt. While it's relatively uh, homogenous for Terran, it's also essentially the same thing in all three matchups. Protoss has to be ready. They have to have a blueprint for uh, Protoss versus Protoss, Terran, and Zerg. But if you have that, then you can truly embrace the balance complaints. You can get those Terrans uh, uh, unhappy that their medevac drops are, are scouted by map hack level observers. The, the Zerg players who try for 15 minutes to Zergling rush pull back, pretend to play a macro game, and then complain about carries. You can get all that. But not if you keep fucking up your first pylon. So, uh, I want to stress that as we get into um, the... It's taken a while to get to this stage of the low APM challenge, but I, I am pushing back on the notion you can just do whatever you want as Protoss. That will win you some games. But if you have good preparation, then you can do whatever you want, and it's going to be even more successful. So, uh, there you go. Hopefully that was helpful. I'll take some questions from the Twitch chat as well. Um, their benefit for being live. Maybe some new subscribers for those games. I did push it a little. How far on the ladder can you get with 40 APM? At least bronze. Why was Winter Clone removed? Actually, the, the Cyclone was changed. Uh, it's changed into not an emote in this channel. It was changed back to the lock-on version we see now, as opposed to the reactor rocket machine gun that it was uh, for a couple of years. Yes, and, and believe it or not, another important point um, is that you're not going to face Cyril. Literally, almost no one can. Cyril is 300 MMR above Clem, who's ranked 2 on the ladder. So, uh, since I'm pretty comfortable ruling that out for you, you can apply all these things. How far can I get making only Void Ray Battery? About as far as I continue to answer questions in chat, which is uh, a little further than I should, but definitely wanting to re regretting it immediately. Why didn't you use Storm tonight? Stylistic choice. Because Storm is a lot of effort for little reward. 90% uh, of the time, like, when are you using Storm? Um, it is either against Terran, in which case you're vulnerable to ghosts, uh, or against Zerg, in which case you've spent a lot of gas on things that aren't Archons. It's just more reliable, and th there's a reason why Pro Toss don't, don't make Storm very often. It's kind of an afterthought, except in very specific scenarios like Mass Zergling or something like that. Um, it's because it just doesn't have the return on investment. Archons are already good enough for what they are. It, it kind of is a choice between Archons and Storm at some point. 
if you're going for the ultimate carrier death ball, you do want Storm. That is part of it. Against Zerg especially. But until then, Archons usually serve the purpose just fine uh, without adding to the already full plate of potential abilities you need to use. Is the this the same for force fields? Uh, I don't know what that's addressing, but force fields are not the same as Storm as the sentry is a support unit, and its only purpose is to provide support to the army. The first priority in 90% of fights is to use Guardian Shield, but uh, except against things like Zerglings, because it provides no benefit. But Guardian Shield is possibly the most underrated ability in the game by new players, because uh, they don't quite understand how it works. Guardian Shield reduces all range damage to units within the Guardian Shield, even if the units that are firing at them are also within the Guardian Shield, by two. Okay? Two doesn't sound like a lot, but a Marine... Uh, let me make sure I have the right numbers here. A Marine does seven damage. Uh, a Stalker... Uh, yeah, a Marine actually only does six damage to start. It reduces it by a third. A Marauder does about 18. Stalkers... They start out at 13 against non-armored units with uh, a few more against armored. Like... The reducing it by two is somewhere between a 10 and a 30% damage reduction for a single unit. A single unit. Uh, there's a reason why in pro games you'll see one or two sentries warped in the late game, and it's not for force field. It's because Guardian Shield is the single most impactful ability, essentially, besides like EMP or a disruptor shot, and sometimes more so. Um, so having a guardian shield can very much make or break small or large fights for Protoss. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Why did you continue building Archons against that last Terran who had Ghosts? Uh, because I had the guess, essentially. I had the guess. He still has to EMP them. He has to use all, the, all his EMPs on those Archons, even if he does. Like, if you're winning... And they're not, like, sitting there beating down your front door. Archons are still the choice. Uh, if I was desperate, I probably would have leaned into disruptors more. Uh, which are definitely not as reliable. But at some point, you just gotta throw it and, and you roll the dice and hope you don't hit your own zealots more than you hit their army. Mm-hmm. But, but Archons, their main purpose is the bouncer. Uh, they bully other units out of the way, so that way uh, you can either just kick them out of the game or at least carve some space. Because remember, EMP only does 100 damage to shields. I say only, but that wipes out Zealots, who only have 50 shields, Immortals, who have 100 shields, Stalkers, who have 80 shields, Colossi only have 150, Archons have 300. So... Even if they hit two EMPs, you still you still got a hundred shields left on that Arca. So it can still be a good unit for forcing a fight. How's oh, that pump? That's my advanced matchup guide. Okay. Um I will quickly explain it here and, and maybe we'll wrap up after this. Uh because clearly Terran versus Terran chess boxing. Alright? Go back and forth. Uh, you position, scan, scan, and, event, and then you start punching each other in the face for a bit, and then you go back to positioning. Terran versus Zerg, either you lead the ghost army, uh, or you die trying. And then Terran versus Protoss, Viking Ghost uh, is the later game. These are mostly late game oriented, as before that, you already know the compositions. Viking Ghost, you see a trend here, Ghost, very good. Uh, for the Terrans. Protoss versus Protoss. Honestly, sometimes I do feel if you let a dog, like if you had a, a a dog just like randomly choose one of four builds, I don't know, with like its paw or something, it would literally be better than some of my builds in PvP. So, uh, Protoss versus Zerg, of course, with the hero style, very warp gate heavy. Protoss versus Terran. Once again, more professionally oriented. But the disruptors 
and a whole lot of them are the only way to really deal with the bio ball against the Viking ghost. Zerg versus Zerg, you got your knives behind your back while shaking hands, because why? Because in ZvZ, the overlords can always see each other. You can always see what's going on in the early game. Uh, it is unique in that sense. Like, you near, have near-perfect vision in ZvZ. Um, but the units are so fast that once they start stabbing you, it doesn't really matter if you know it's coming, uh, because it's already hitting you. Um, but in the early game, you're kind of in an agreement because there's no anti-air outside of the bases, besides, like, queens pushing it away and being real suspicious. Zerg versus Protoss, maybe a bit outdated with the queen walks, but still very much a part of the game is, um, Brenda's queen moots. And then Zerg versus Terran is, of course, Ghostbusters. Winter, you mentioned fucking up your first pylon. When you put on your first pylon, that's a good question. Um, now, to answer that question, like I, I have a couple different ways I could go with it. The main way I'm going to go with it is like maybe watch any single bit of any of the guides or videos or games at all ever. Um... But that would be mean to say. So I'll say nothing else, though, because that was the appropriate response. Uh, that is, I, I'm sticking by that one. All right. Well, with all that knowledge um, dispersed... And uh, Angry Coach uh, around the corner, maybe, kind of. Well, that's kind of how I feel at the moment. And, and it's probably, we should, that means a good cutoff point. Thank you for watching the Low APM Challenge up to Diamond Edition. Uh, hopefully you found it educational, entertaining, edutaining. And hopefully I made your day. Wake up! Wake up! It's over. You didn't like yet. The loco video is about to autoplay. No. That, that, watch the watch the next one. Um. Anyways, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Uh, I hope I made your day a little bit better. Stay tuned.